to the uh, next uh, speaker. I think a lot of you will really enjoy this. The next speaker is Arthur Sacek, yes. and he will be talking about, uh, about Lego. A and he will be looking for a couple of volunteers where he will show you uh, what you can learn from failure. And I think this, uh, this is a really great thing to do, especially in Holland. It seems like, as opposed to the Americans, we're really scared of failing. It's like, if you fail in Holland, you're done. You just need to pack your bags and go away. While as the Americans, they try to learn from failure and they try to, you know, the get up, fall down, get up, move on. Um, and I think this is exactly what you're going to show us with yeah. 3D, is that not? Yeah, All right. Please give a warm welcome to Arthur Sacek. Hey guys, I'm so excited to be here. It's a pleasure. And uh, I love to talk about prototyping. And in this case, to talk about prototyping with Lego. Um, I'm just going I think it's better to go here. Yeah. Yes, that's it. It's uh, yeah. If you want, I, I can stay behind and yeah. I will be here, okay. Um. So I have been working with Lego products, Lego sets, Lego elements for about 15 years. So I'm going to share with you some of my experiences with that and what I learned in this process. Um, in these years, I have been developing different kind of projects with LEGO. Some of them are for the educational area. I think most of them. So uh, I have been developing projects for a company in Brazil that works with LEGO education and develop contents for schools. So my job was to develop LEGO models and build instructions. So here for kindergarten, it's a uh, wood picker. And uh, when you turn the handle and it starts to pick, and it's really nice to talk about music, uh, about a lot of things. And also, you are going to have the technology uh, content about this one. Moving forward, it's for introduction about robotics it's um it's a crab and uh it has a does it work it has a distance sensor and when you s go really close it uh, starts to walk sideways and uh, we can have a little higher more complex one it's a lifter it's for high school so you can work with different kind of contents with this kind of model so it's really nice for schools. But before I move on, I would like to talk about ideas. When you have an idea and you get excited about that, I think that you have been uh, living about that, but when you have an idea and you are excited about that and want it to become true, want to become a solution, and um, you start to talk about it, you go to the pa your parents, your friends, your family, your teacher, and say, well, I have a G idea and I, I want to make it. And normally, that person will say to you, well, great idea, but keep calm. Let's put in a paper everything that we need to make it. Let's make a project. And um, I can remember when I was in the university, <laughs> my final project, um, I was quite excited about it. And the teacher said to me, well, it's a one-year project. And um, let's make the project, but we are going to expand the first semester, six months, just with research. And uh, it was terrible for, for me because I would like to create. I want to make it and to research. 
And uh, he said to me, and we are going to build our prototype just by the end. So the best thing will be just the final one, almost the final one, because it can, uh, as a prototype, it can go wrong, it can go right, but so we're going to have uh, another step here to, to work with that. So it was something that was uh, a problem to me. And uh, I'm going to uh, question all this process with my experience. To talk about that, I will start with my first machine. My first machine was a lathe. Uh, I'm from Brazil. And uh, in that time, Lula was the president. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to support Lula. Yeah, I think you know that we are having a lot of political problems in Brazil right now. And I'm not supporting that. But Lula, when he was a worker, not a politician, working, he was in an uh, industry and he was operating a lathe. And uh, in that time, we, you would have um, uh, word skills. Word skills, it's like um, a competition for technical schools. So I was requested to build a Lego lift, lift. Uh, just to understand how a machine works. We can have a square volume, square shape size, and uh, we are going to make it in, in a revolution model. So it's a cylinder. But I didn't want just to make a cylinder. I want to make a more complex shape. So my idea is to make like a um, uh, table fit, something like that. that it's all work. But I had a problem that time because in that time, it was about 10 years ago, I was not so good with coding. So to create a machine and code all these curves would be really tough. So I started to find solutions for that. And I looked for another experience. Uh, I'd like to make not a, a code, but I'd like to make a drawing. And I want the machine to copy it. So I got this example for an, from another robot exercise, exercise. Let's move to a robot, a very simple one with just two wheels. When you move these two wheels to the same direction, the robot will go forward, right? When you move just one of them, the robot will move left. If you do the opposite, it's going to right. And uh, let's get a, another point here. Let's put a light sensor on it. Light sensor works with reflect light. So if the light is on a dark surface, the dark surface will get the light. You're not going to reflect a lot of it. So we are going to have a low value. And uh, if you move it to either surface, we are going to have a, a better. <laughs> it's not. Wow, wow. Yeah? It's working? Yeah. So let's put this robot to follow a line. And for that, we are going to give names for the motors. And we are going to write a script right now. It's a very simple one. So the first thing, read sensor value. If it's lower than 50, we're going to have one, two. I'm going to use all the mics. Um, let's put the motor A 100%. And the motor B zero. If it's going more than fifty percent of the color, the reflected color, we are going to be make the other possibility. And repeat it forever. And so I decided to make this concept in that machine with a light sensor. Let's check it out.
patients. The only element that is not Lego is the drill. It's a time lapse. It takes, a, it takes about uh, 30 minutes to make a piece like this size. Okay. Great. Well, to make a uh, table fit, it's nice, but it's not awesome. I'd like to move forward. So I decided to create something that could really sculpt a, uh, a model. And um, I really like also computer graphics. And that is a kind of imaging computer graphics that we call death map. Death map, it's a kind of image that tells how deep how far your model is from the camera. So if it's quite near to the camera, it's get bright. If it's far, it's going to get darker. So the light sensor, it, it doesn't uh, just read uh, black and white. It can read the full range of uh, the grayscale. So I decided to print an, an image like that, put a sensor to read each part of it and to send the drill go deeper or higher. The problem is, is that the, my first prototype didn't work with that. It was terrible because the light sensor doesn't read just a pixel. It's going to read an area. So it's going to take an average of it. So the result didn't work. But I keep one with this project and um, I decided to take off the light sensor. It to convert all the data in a text file. So I got each pixel and convert up a line with a number. If it's dark, it's going to get zero. If it's getting uh, lighter, 25, and move on, 50, 35, and 100. Let's check this result.
it's so nice because the, the concept, it's really simple. It came from the line follower, the rope that you're just going to follow the line. I didn't build a really huge code with a lot, because if you are going to ask an engineer to build a, a CNC machine, he's going to think about a lot of coding, a lot of G coding, to create a library, to identify all the path. But sometimes you can have some sh shortcuts. Well, um, I'm going to show a, another project. I don't have a lot of time, but uh, I'd like a volunteer that could be like my size. I don't want a, a so huge one. <laughs> okay, yes, come here. Um, as you can see, most of my projects here are really slow. So I decided to create a project that could be faster. And uh, in, this, in this case, I, use, uh, I, I, would like, uh, I would like to create a um, humanoid. If you go to the internet and look for Lego humanoids, you're going to find a lot of them, but really slow one, because Lego motors are not so strong. But uh, so in normally, most of them reduce a lot of uh, the movements, so the robot like, moves like the so I decided to create Shadow. And uh, what's her name? Camilo. Camilo. Let's put it. Perfect. And you're going to. it It is working. Now I want you to move like this. Yes. As you can see, I changed all the concept of moving parts with. Uh, um, Lego parts, because when you think on arm, you always try to move it from the axle. But there is a lot of momento in this movement. So I made like a muscle. So I'm not moving the motor in the axle, but I have some levers here that push the arms. So it's much faster. You can be faster. Make like this. Yes, you are getting it. It's a prototype. It's a just the first step. I want to make it move the head, make move the torso. Uh, the idea is not to use a skeleton, but maybe a connect. That is the idea. Well, I'm going to move on because I just have some minute, more minutes, and I'm going to back. Yeah, do you like it? <laughs> yes, you can stay with it. In, just for the sign, yeah. <laughs> um, let's back for our project. <laughs> um, with that idea, I just learned that uh, this kind of process didn't, was not working for me because my best results were not like this. And um, the meaning of the word prototype I think that was not the same for me and for all the people. So I'm going to show a, a new project that um, it happened last year and uh, it was awesome for me. Uh, I just received a request for a company in US to build a machine that could fold paper airplanes. There is a company in US that, that its name is Arrow. It's a huge electronic company and they have a aerospace 
and um, defense um, division and wants to make a commercial. And this commercial was to have a, machi a leg machine that could fold the paper airplanes. I'm going to show you the result. All systems are good. Today, whether it be for peace or war, we Westerners depend on wings. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It's a really nice one, yeah? They like it so much, the commercial, they, they paid a Super Bowl ad. It was in the Super Bowl, and it, it's amazing because it's so expensive. And um, a, a lot of people asking me, oh, you edited it. The machine couldn't make it in the full uh, time, so I, I'm going to show you. So that's the, the size of the machine. It takes about, um, I think, uh, one meter and, and 70 centimeters. Uh, that's the real speed of it. And um, as you can see, it's a complex machine. And a lot of people ask me, how to start a project like that? How to start to build? How, how can we start it? I'm going to give you the time so you can see the whole process working. So the first thing is to have the angle folds. That's the most important part. So we have it here the first stage with this kind of fold. The second uh, part of the machine will make the wings. Look, the wing is going down. We don't have yet the middle fold. It's going to be made in this part. And here we are going to put it in the launch system. It works like a tennis launcher. And that's how it works. Uh, it, it, and the thing that's quite incredible is that machine still works. It was made uh, one year ago, and last week I was in a maker fair in uh, San Francisco, and in just one day, this machine made 105 airplanes. So it was really awesome, because this kind of machine was not supposed to work the whole life. It's, it's just Lego. And um, I will back to that, how to start a machine like that. Who has experience with machines that fold paper airplanes? I did not have somebody had. I don't think so. So how to start it? If I start in the same process that my teacher in university said to me, let's make a research. Let's try to find how to make it. Do you think that I, I could get? I don't think so. So my first step was to prototype. And I will show my first prototype. It's heavy. No, it's okay. I went to my lab, and my first prototype was that. A paper. I made a wall, a brick, a Lego brick wall, and started to make like this. to learn how to work with paper. I call it my first prototype. It's really simple. I got an idea that I could use a wall, a Lego wall, to press it, let's test it. So my experience said to me, never accumulate ideas, test them. Never put a lot of ideas in one project without testing. If you have an idea, test. Really simple test. The thing that your prototypes, we are going to get more complex. 
That's my lab in Brazil. My second prototype, I decided to make another kind of fold, not using a wall, but two wheels. I moved to pneumatic systems. I start very simple, remember the wall. If it didn't work, it's perfect, because I know the way that it's not going to be. That's the thing, if you get wrong, it's good because you now you know that that way will not work. You need to find another one. I moved to other kind and it's getting more complex. And I start to learn how to work with paper and Lego together with a lot of simple prototypes. That's the idea. Um, when I was requested to make this project, the idea is to produce that project in US because they want to record the full behind the scenes. And I built that project in just five days. I started in the Monday and finished on Friday. A lot of people say to me, whoa, it's, it's so fast. How did you do that? I learned how to work with paper and Lego together in Brazil. I made so many prototypes, so many experiences that I know now what works and what don't work. So here's the launching system. Here so I am. A let's start with a test with the launch one system, of my prototypes. but with two different kind of planes: the simple one, the basic, and the dark one. Let's try the basic one. I was choosing which kind of airplane I would produce. As you can see, it's not a good one. Let's try the dark one. Much better. So, I will learn just with the testing. So let's book for our project. I like to make a project, to make a plan. I think it's important, but my idea now is different. I don't make just one prototype and then I make a lot of them in the whole process. Prototype is not a step, but it's part of the whole process. You need to prototype since the beginning to the end. Simple prototypes so you can get a much better result. So that's it. Thank you so much. Is this your own business? <laughs> yes. Let's. It's a good question. Um, yes. For this year, it's incredible. But I'm really working with that. Um, there are some companies that really play, uh, pays for me to play with Lego. Um, so, uh, this year I have a full agenda, but I don't know if it's going to be sustainable for next year. I have been developing different kind of projects for educational area, but I reduce my contract because Brazil, uh, as I said, is not a good uh, economic situation right now. So, a lot of companies are not requesting a lot of things to me. So, I'm looking for new clients around the world. So, I have some of them in the U.S. So in this year, yes, that's my work. And uh, one thing that happened, it's so interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm working now as a consultant about folding paper. Some companies that watch my video, that learn that, uh, uh, just watch it, contract me as a consultant to work with them to fold paper for packaging and all, all this kind of stuff. You? Any other questions? Yeah. Yes. You are, you are not an employee of Lego. No. no, never. No. I'm buying my Lego. I buy all this stuff. I spend, I spend a lot of money on that. Yeah. Wow. Sometimes I look for discounts, but it's not easy. <laughs> Any other questions? I see a hand there, but I don't think, I think you're just filming. <laughs> Anybody? 
All right. Yeah? You have a question? Uh, go bring the mic. So do you document this? Yes, I try to do that, and I have been doing that after this project. Um, I have my YouTube channel, all the behind the scenes of this project. So uh, when I went to US, it was looked like a um, reality show, because I was in a room with a, with a lot of cameras and a microphone the full day with me. So uh, it was really nice. Uh, what I'm doing right now is to document, because it's really interesting to have it in my YouTube channel. Did that answer, answer your question? Yeah? <laughs> it's not an easy thing, but uh, I'm trying to do that. All right. Now or never. Last question. That was it. All right. Thank you so much. Can I have a warm applause, please?